card here. Quinn right on the front row. Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Quinn, it's good to see you. Wanted to ask you, uh, the OU Texas games, the rivalry, uh, crazy things happen every year. I want to just take you back to last year's game. Is that just an example how, you know, we look back at the series over the last five, six years, comes down to, it can come down to the wire. Is that just an example of what this series can do and just anything can happen? Yeah, for sure. I mean, with rivalries like that, I mean, anything can happen, whether, you know, we're ranked number one in the country and OU's not ranked or vice versa. I mean, that's just one of those games where, I mean, you got to come out and be on your game because, you know, you're going to get the other team's best shot for sure. Stay on the front row. Ryan Chapman, Sooners and SI. Did you get to spend any time with Jack Snarl at the Passing Academy and just kind of what your impressions of him as he's kind of taken over across from you? Yeah, I mean, um, Jackson's a cool dude to hang around. Um, he's a good dude, can obviously sling it. Um, you know, he grew up in the, around the same area as me and um, at Den, Den Geyer, I believe, right? Um, and I, I played Den Geyer in high school. I don't think – it was back when Eli Stowers was there, actually. Um, but, no, being around – being, like, growing up in the same area, you always, you know, have good conversation starters right there. So, But, no, he's, he's a cool dude to hang around. He's going to do good things at OU, I already know. Um, he's also a young guy, so I'm excited to see, see how they turn out, except for one game out of the year. <laughs> Left side, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX in College Station. Quinn, you know, growing up in, in the state, just how familiar are you with the Texas, Texas A&M rivalry, and how excited are you to be a part of the first team to kind of renew it this year? Yeah, I mean, um, it stopped playing back in 2011, if I'm correct. Um, I was pretty young. I think I was eight. But, you know, just hearing, like, stories and, and what my dad and, and family has talked about it, you know, they, my dad actually said um, that he thinks that him growing up, he believed that the, the A&M game was bigger than the, the Red Rivalry game. So um, I'm, I'm excited to, to have that game back. Um, and um, it's going to be a cool experience, especially going to, to Kyle Field, um, you know, Thanksgiving weekend. And I know that place is going to be rocking. So we're all, pretty, we're all pretty fired up for it. Right side, third row, then pass it to your right. Quinn, Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Uh, Graham Mertz said you and Jackson Dart played five hours of pool together at the Manning Passing Academy. Uh, who won those matches? Man, I was just a, I was a spectator. I was, I was a spectator. I'm not very good at pool, but no, Jackson Dart was, he was playing like all day. So um, I wish I could answer that for you. I should have just said me probably, but um, no, I don't know. I was a spectator, unfortunately. Left side, third row on the aisle. Yeah, Joseph Duffy, T's TV Sports. Um, I asked Jody Barron what was the most undervalued thing about D, uh, the D.C. Pekwikowski. What would be the most undervalued aspect for Steve Sarkeesian on your career? And then also about DKR and the stadium joining in some very fierce environments in the SEC. What can people expect in the SEC about the environments being that they're going to be more night games? And what can they expect from the, throughout the season what to expect? Yeah, I think, um, you know, adding DKR to that um, – you know, road atmosphere is going to be good for a lot of teams to experience. Um, you know, I think we do a, a great job of, you know, making it hard on away teams to come in and, and play, which is great. Um, that's how it should be, right? And, uh, you know, I think we, I think our fans did a good job. Um, my first year here when, when Alabama came of showing kind of what, what we're capable of doing, um, you know, fan base wise. And then under the thing that's most undervalued about Sark was the second question. Um, I think just the way that he gets vulnerable with us and shares his life experiences with us and ultimately just wants us to become better people and, and a better man and honestly a better, um, you know, father and husband overall. On the aisle, third row. Yeah, Quinn, Evan Camico, Pig Trail Nation. I know in 2021 you didn't play in the Texas-Arkansas game, but what does it mean to you to be able to play in this year's rendition in a rivalry that dates all the way back to 1894? Yeah, it's definitely going to be cool to, to you know, rekindle that, that rich traditional rivalry for sure. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm excited to, to go to Arkansas and, and uh, play against them. Like you said, it dates back to, whatever, 1800-something. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but no, it's going to be good for both universities to to finally get back to that because I think it was, it was like the 50s and the 60s. They were just going back and forth, so that's going to be cool to to to, to get to play against them. 
We'll go on the aisle back here on the left. Hey, Gwen, Olivia Whitmire with Channel 19 in Huntsville, Alabama. When we spoke with Kirby Smart the other day, he mentioned the Alabama-Texas game from last season, saying, I think that can really prove that Texas is ready to play in the SEC. You are, of course, a huge part of that. Take me back to that game and just kind of do you agree with Coach Smart that that was kind of proving to the SEC that y'all are ready to be here? Yeah, I think that kind of goes to show what we're capable of as a whole. And um, I think the biggest thing for us is, yeah, we're capable of of playing games um, the way we played that one. But, um, I mean, now we just have to really do it on a much more consistent level. And um, because, you know, week in and week out, we're playing uh, tough opponents. So I I definitely can agree with that. You know, going into Alabama and playing, you know, one of the hardest uh, and one of the hardest stadiums um, to play in and, you know, against, you know, one of the greatest coaches ever. Um, It's definitely not easy to go in there and and accomplish what we accomplished. On the aisle here. Uh, Chris Hummer, 24-7 Sports. Quinn, you grew up watching Texas. I know you were a little young when Case McCoy was slinging it, but I think a lot of people probably view you in a similar light at this point to Case and Vince in some ways. Like, What do you think of that spotlight on you, and how do you think about your role as the Texas QB? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of pressure that comes with playing quarterback at the University of Texas for sure. Um, but I couldn't be more blessed and excited for the opportunity that, I, that I've been granted uh, from the good Lord above and, and the platform that he has given me. And um, I'm just, just excited for year three. Left side, fifth row. Trevor Denton from uh, from Way 31 over here. Yeah, um, Quinn, it's a fascinating schedule. A trip to Michigan, you're hosting Georgia, all these old rivalries back. What was kind of your, your first reaction when you saw the schedule released and all those interesting matchups? What was your first reaction? Um, overall, just excitement because, you know, to be the best, you got to play the best. So, I mean, we're all fired up to go, uh, like you said, up to Ann Arbor. Um, it's actually my second time going up there. So I was up there when we when Ohio State played them uh, back in 2021. So it's going to be cool to go up there, back up there, and, you know, see it. And I understand, you know, the hatred that Ohio State has for them. So I, I understand the rivalry. So it's, it's going to be cool to kind of carry that. But um, – Overall, excited, excited for the um, for the season and all the great games that we're going to have on schedule. In the back, on the left, uh, Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. You were draft eligible. You chose to came uh, to come back to Texas for one more season. Uh, what were the big factors in deciding uh, that the NFL can wait and, and you wanted to keep playing college football? Yeah, I think one of the main things for me was just getting more experience under my belt, and um, you know, there's kind of a line of demarcation. For, for guys who really have success in the league. And obviously there's some, some guys that have rare accounts of it not being this way. But, you know, there's, there's a line kind of like number at 25, 25 starts that, that guys, you really see like a jump in how their career went. And I, I just kind of wanted to, to give myself a better chance to, to have a, you know, a long and successful career in the NFL because I don't want to be a guy that just comes and goes. I want to be somebody who's remembered. Second row. Justin Wells, Inside Texas. Good to see you. Yep. You know, you're getting a lot of questions about a backup quarterback, but the real question is, tell us about Trey Owens and about Cole Lord, the real, the real guys in that quarterback room. Yeah, they they ended up winning that spring game, didn't they? I think they did. So, I mean, I mean, y'all saw the how capable uh, all those guys are in that room. That's why I'm so grateful that I'm able to play the position. And then Coach Chart trusts me with with his baby, which is the offense, and and gave me the keys. So, I mean. Especially Cole Lord, just the way that he comes to work every day and grinds is, is just cool to see, and it's um, inspiring. Um, and, and Trey, at, he's he's a young guy, and it's, he's like goofy, and it's funny to be around. So um, it's just been cool to see both of them, both of them grow for sure. Final question here in the front. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Um, can, what can you tell us about the two transfers from Alabama receivers and? What do you anticipate telling your teammates about playing in the big house in Ann Arbor? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, both of those guys have come in, you know, full speed and um, have really succeeded within the offense. I think they do some similar things on offense over there at Alabama that we did, that we do over here at Texas. Just because, you know, Coach Stark came from there, so they're going to carry some stuff, some of the, his stuff. Um, but, no, they've done a great job, and obviously we've seen glim- glimpses of, of what both of them are capable of doing, you know, Isaiah came on late for, for them, and, you know, um, Amari had, the, had a good play against us. He made a couple of our defenders look silly, but um, 
you know, both of those guys are going to be big contributors for us for sure. I mean, and then going up to the big house, yeah, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be an awesome environment. Place is going to be rocking, especially all the hype, just because it's an early early game, and you know they're coming off a a really big win or the national championship, and um, yeah, the team up north. Quinn, thank you very much. Wish we had everybody doing today. I just want to thank everybody for being here and then have uh, me being blessed to be here and the opportunity on to be on behalf of my uh, team. I don't thank Sark and, and the uh, media team for uh, choosing me to, to talk uh, on the standpoint of the Burnt Orange University of Texas. So thank you all. We'll start over here on the left side, fourth row. Yeah, Joseph Duffy, TSTV Sports and Austin. Jade, for your defensive corner, Pete Kwiatkowski, what is something that you think is underappreciated for him that a lot of people in media may not know or even be aware of? Uh, he's a genius. Uh, yeah, that man right there is a genius. Um, from a standpoint of, of us having that record five and seven and then um, giving up those amount of points that year from going from eight and four and then um, 12 and two. I mean, like if you could describe one person in one word, I'd say growth. Um, and that's and that's somebody I can trust um, to, to make me a better person on and off the field as a man. So I appreciate him on the aisle. Fourth row. Hey, John, hey, uh, Travis Rachek, Spectrum News. Um, I remember watching you walk off the field in New Orleans, and you kind of did like a turnaround and looked, mm -hmm. maybe this is my last time on a college football field. What do you remember about that moment, and then what has that moment done for you as far as motivation this offseason? Yeah, that, that moment right there was a little bit weird for me. I, I was quite uh, kind of confused on, you know, what was next for me. Up in, in the journey, but me being right now and being me being here today and blessed, um, I'm being where my feet is at. Um, you know that that loss and that feeling right there. You know people don't like feeling that. So in order to not feel that, you have to you know take one day at a time and and move move with a, a mindset of of not having regret. You know, and, and I'm glad that we had that taste last year because now we have the opportunity to work every single day to not have that taste again. So you know everybody goes through something in life, and it's kind of how you. Uh, to, to choose and to kind of to figure out somebody as a man's character is how you adapt to a situation like that. And, and I think as a team, as a collective team, uh, we're going to we're going to adapt very well to that situation. So left side, second row. Yeah, Chris Hummer, 24-7 Sports. I'm curious, um, how many times this offseason have you gotten the question, is Texas ready for the SEC? And then how do you think about that question? Um, you know, that's it's kind of been like the, the main question, I, I think, of me seeing it on Twitter and things like that. But um, at the end of the day, you know, football is football. Um, you know, the, the grass and the yardage is not going to change. You know, the, the field is still going to be the same length. It's going to be two end zones. So, so at the end of the day, um, it's, we're on a standpoint where, you know, um, we respect our opponents, but we don't fear them. So at the end of the day, we're going to get their best shot, and we have to make sure we give them our best shot. So it's going to be a, an amazing, uh, amazing season. Um, it's going to be a long season, but it's going to be an amazing season, and, and we're most, def most definitely up and ready for the challenge. Front row and then pass it over your shoulder. Uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World, uh, bringing up another tough game from last year. Uh, that final drive against Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl, how tough was it just trying to get the, that one stop you guys needed, that one play you guys needed, and how much did that drive really propel you for the second half of the season, what you guys were able to do? I mean, that, that, that drive right there, let alone, it, it taught us to – like some so small, it, it could change the trajectory of the game. So, and it was communication. Not having a communication, it was kind of what led up to that play and us losing that game. So, um, with that being said, just knowing on how important communication is in the back end and and being well connected and everybody being on the same page with each other, uh, it means a lot. It means everything with the defense. Third row, and then pass it to your right. Derek Peterson, Saturday down south. Um, Texas has had a. a a pretty good run of running backs, of impressive running backs coming through. And there's some excitement that C.J. Baxter can be another one of those guys, from, I guess from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Have you seen him grow this offseason? Um, like before I even – like I, I love that question. Before I even hit on uh, Cedric and, and those guys, I mean, it, it all starts with like just the – the, the program, uh, Coach Sark, um, him hiring Coach Choice, and Coach Choice is a is a person and, and a wonderful man. Um, he helps everybody be a better man individually, and, and I know if he's doing that for me, and I'm not even in his room, I know most definitely what he's doing for uh, the running back room. So, um, but to hit on for your question, uh, Cedric, um, he's growing. Um, he he got to learn under Jonathan Brooks, a great back, um, and he's still learning from Coach Choice. So, um, the sky's the limits for him and, and the rest of the guys in that room. Right here on the aisle. 
Justin Wells, Inside Texas. Good to see you today. How you doing? Hey, um, there was an expectation and talk that you may leave early last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what was that conversation you had with your family about coming back to Texas for your senior year and to, 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 to do that? And what was your impression of your ranking mm. on that college football 25 game? Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll go from the game and then we'll, we'll go to reality and things like that. Um, but for the game, you know, I haven't even played it yet. Um, I, just got, I just got the code um, last night. I'm going to download it, you know, after this wonderful SEC media day with you guys. I'm going to go home and download it. But um, rating, you know, it's, you know, it is what it is. This is a game at the end of the day. Um, but to hit on the main question and the big task, um, you know, with me coming back, it was so much, you know, so much emotion and things like that. I really had to sit there and pray um, and then talk to, talk with my family. And then also I got advice from Coach Sark, um, Michael Huff, Quandre Diggs, and, and things like that, and vets like that. And just kind of wanted to hear their standpoint. And they all gave me feedback, and I just kind of, like, put it in this big jar of my own. And, and I had to figure out which one was my best opportunity and, and like that. And, and me praying it was what really helped and, and, and dove into that. But it, it it was a lot that, that came with it. Um, but at the end of the day right now, um, Sark always tells me, be where your feet's at. And, and ever since I made that decision to come back, I'm, I'm locked in right now, and I'm, I'm most definitely ready for the season. So, Third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with just the, the Texas, Texas A&M rivalry in general, but just how excited are you to go to Kyle Field and, and be the first team to kind of renew this, this rivalry? Uh, I mean, it's going to be amazing. I mean, all the games are going to be amazing. We're, I'm not just looking forward to that game. I'm looking forward to every single game. I mean, that was another reason why I came back to, to play one more season in this burnt orange uh, for this great university. I uh, mean, but that game right there is going to mean a lot just for on a standpoint for the UT community and, and how much it means to them and, and how much like it means from over the years from the past vets like uh, Coach Blake Gideon and things like that, talking to him and, and knowing what he did and what, and the burnt orange and what it meant to him. So just kind of relaying the message to the younger guys and newer guys that's never been a part of this this culture and just bringing them along that that these games are serious and, and this is something that we have to like live for and we just can't take these things for granted. Right side, third row. Jade Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Can you tell the story of 23 to nine? Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so me, uh, for one, starting off to uh, to wear 23 is to honor a friend that passed away, Todrick Todrick Fowler. Um, his we called him Trolley. Uh, he passed away in Austin, Texas, but that was something to, to do for him, and, and I kind of felt uh, me deciding to come back and, and things like that, um, it was, it kind of felt like a point, like, I think I did a, I, I did a lot, and to honor him, to honor 23, and like that, for him, and stuff like that, and seven is, is something I always wanted to do, um, I had to ask Huff and Coach Sark for their permission, um, and, and they granted my, uh, that permission, and they, and they let me wear seven, but just kind of being able to wear seven, it, it means so, it means a lot to me, just growing up, watching Michael Huff's highlights and stuff like that. I, I never was able to, you know, I don't remember. I was so young to, to watch a live game of, of Michael Huff at, at UT. But being able to watch the highlights and, and, and to look at him and, and wanting to do better in him in that number. When, when he gave me the number, I, I told him I wanted to do better. I'm always striving for greatness. And it's so hard to, to do better in, in a number that somebody was so great in. But um, I'm up for the challenge, and I know it's going to push me to be the best version of myself on and off the field. So, Final two questions. We'll go here and then AP. Corey Mose, KB Sports, nice to see you, Jade. How you doing? Love the suit. Love hey, the suit. Mess I messed with your shoes today. Man. Crazy, crazy. You know, Marnie's, you know. <laughs> but anyway, just wanted to ask you about the secondary. Uh, you have a fellow Austinite now coming with Andrew Makuba. How's it been like reconnecting with him and getting him all uh, situated in the defense? But then also your role is going to shift a little bit as well. How excited are you to show your versatility, not only in the nickel, but also out wide at corner? Yeah, I mean, I'll start off the question with um, Andrew and, and things like that, and I'll bring Taff along. Uh, me and Andrew, we go way back with Michael Taff. We we started training with each other like eight years ago and things like that. And when and over the years, just seeing the growth of those two people um, on and off the field, they pushed me to be the best who I could be. Uh, like Taff look ups to me, but I look up to Taff at the end of the day. Like Taff, he went through so much adversity uh, from being a walk on to being on scholarship, and that kind of motivates me. Just knowing that if he could do it, I can do more. Like there's more in, in my book to do. And then um, and Drew, I always I try to get Drew to come to Texas from day one. Um, I didn't want him to go to Clemson, you know, but it, it was his decision and stuff like that. But I'm, 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 I'm proud that he's here now and he's a family now. But uh, for the for the defensive group, I mean, for me being versatile, I mean, like that's that's a plus for um, the team. But I want to hit on like the 
the the person Sark is and the, and the coach um, coach he is like the way he recruits and stuff like that. Um, like yeah, you could talk about recruiting, but the way he produces, uh, he obviously produced me to be a better player and a better person, but a better person off the field and a better player on the field. But uh, they just don't produce me; they produce everybody. Like yeah, I'm versatile, but I mean everybody in that staff, I can name five safeties that can go play nickel right now um, and they actually get reps at nickel at practice and I can name four to five corners that get reps at nickel so they make everybody versatile because they produce talent and and at the University of Texas they produce talent I mean you can see it and over the years and stuff like that so final question right here Jardé, uh, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicate Radio, would you mind ranking the nickel cornerback and safety position your preference and as coach discussed that when you're playing in the SEC, the defense has to do certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I feel that at those three positions, those are all important positions and, and things like that. Um, you know, at the nickel, is so much um, – that can go on. But I feel like at the nickel, you're kind of more in the game. You know, at, at corner, you tend, as a corner, people, they tend to get, um, they can law you to sleep, you know? Um, you know, I used to, Coach Joseph used to tell me when I used to play like primary corner in my sophomore year, he used to tell me, it can only be five plays. Like, you, you can only probably change the game five plays out of, out of the game. And you just have to kind of stay awake for those five plays. So it's kind of always different, you know, at position. So at nickel, it's like you're in there, like, you're in the trenches. I can be in the run game. Um, I could be a perimeter guy. Um, I could be in the slot guarding one of their best receivers. It's, it's all different different things. I can be boundary safety coming in for the run gap and things like that. But a boundary safety and um, star, they kind of play a little bit of similar, uh, similarities and stuff like that for, like, the curl flats and things like that. So um, at the end of the day, they all, they're all good positions uh, for me and, and for anybody on the, on the defense uh, that we have right now. And everybody's capable of playing everything. So. Johnny, thank you very much. We've got to go. We're running long, so thanks very much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, guys. Welcome. He's ready for your questions. Yes, sir. Where will we like? We'll start here on the left side, fifth row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Former teammate of yours, uh, Trill, now on the uh, Auburn defensive line. Just, just what's Auburn getting in, uh, in Trill Carter? Uh, yeah, definitely a hard-working, uh, hard-working young man. Uh, his time at UT, he showed, showed me um, – a lot of his character and the way he goes about business. So definitely a hardworking and respectable young man. Stay on that row. Adam Ogburn, uh, K10 TV out of Sherman, Texas. Kevin, I mean, just how much confidence does it give this offense that Quinn Ewers returning for his third year as the starter? Yeah, it gives you a lot of confidence, especially because um, the more you can spend time with a guy and play with him, the more you can jail with him. And e- even even then, we have guys behind Quinn and, and even like other backups as well who who would just jail right into our uh, playbook and scheme as well. So so it's very exciting. Right side on the aisle. And Jeff Howe, Horns 24-7. Kelvin, when you look back at your sophomore year, where did you feel like you grew the most from your freshman year and as you – you know, kind of went through the off season. Where were some things that you felt like you really wanted to work on going into your junior year? Yeah, from uh, freshman to sophomore year, I feel like the consistency of me uh, being more in tune with the game. Um, um, I felt my teammate Jake Majors. He kind of he came back from a little O line retreat and he talked about it. He was like, "Do you like football? Do you love football? Do you live football?" I feel like I'm 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 living football. Like I live for football. That's what this is what I want to do. So. Uh, just me being uh, more in tune to film, more in tune to my technique, just different things like that. And just going into this off season, just staying consistent and just making sure I stay dominant. Left side, fourth row. Morgan Weaver with KBTX from College mm-hmm. Station. Just coming to the SEC, that means playing A&M again. What have mm-hmm. you heard about that rivalry, and are you have that game circled on the calendar this year? Yeah, uh, I've heard a lot about the rivalry. I still, um, I, I wasn't, I was too young to remember Justin Tucker uh, when he kicked the game with a kick. But I've definitely seen highlights from it, and uh, it's going to be a great rivalry. Going to be a, a great um, type of excitement just to keep that tradition going. We go on the side, third row. Kelvin Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Why is Texas a good fit with the SEC conference? Uh, just just us trying to come in and, and, and gain respect from our opponents, I feel like that's the biggest thing um, for us as of coming into a new conference, just gaining the respect and, and understanding that we respect them, but we want them to respect us as well. Right here on the edge. Justin Wells, Inside yes, Texas. Good to see you, Kelvin. Yes, um, 
all these mock drafts are coming out for 2025, mm-hmm. and you're in the top ten in every single one of them. Yes, How are you separating that and it not being a distraction and just focusing where your feet are right mm-hmm. now on this season? Because it's got to be difficult. Yeah, you, you said it perfectly. Just be where your feet are. Uh, don't try to look too far ahead because once you do that, things will go downhill for you because uh, then it's like you're focusing on more than what you need to at the moment. Front row. Uh, Michael Cobble from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Speaking of being where your feet are, I didn't get to ask Jade about it, but how about them kicks that he had on? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, honestly, it's kind of different. Some different. I, I don't see it a lot. Uh, I got the car when we were getting ready to uh, come out here, and I'm like, I'm like what, I was just asking, what, what, like, what did he have on? So, so it was kind of kind of pretty cool just seeing him. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of flared up and try some new stuff. Stay on the left side. Uh, Jacob Morris, Big Trail Nation, uh, mm-hmm. joining the SEC. Another rivalry. Texas gets to renew is with Arkansas, long yeah. historic rivalry. Just how excited are you for that game? How excited are you to go to Fayetteville? Yeah, uh, I've had some teammates who played that game a couple years ago, and they talked to me about the atmosphere and all the excitement the fans bring. So, so just hearing that, I'm very excited to try to get in there and uh, just just get to get to experience the atmosphere of Arkansas. Front row. Uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Uh, more rivalry talk. You know, as Oklahoma and Texas fan bases learn about the SEC, mm-hmm. how would you describe OU Texas to all the SEC fans? Uh, man, I'll just say two two teams who has a lot of grit and a lot of passion about their school, especially just being able to represent. I, I know most guys, they stay in, in town, I mean, in, uh, in their state, so I'm an in-state guy, and just being able to represent my family and also just being able to represent my state as well. So uh, it's, it's a lot of – it's two teams who's passionate and ready to play. Left-hand side. Uh, Corey Moe with KB Sports in Austin. Nice to see you, Kelvin. Yes, sir, you too. Uh, just wanted to ask about the offensive line. Everyone's returning except the right tackle position. Mm-hmm. Just one, the guy leaving Christian, what did he teach you? Something that may come to mind when you think of that name, but then also Cam coming into that slot. What have you seen for, for him to be ready to take over? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll say the biggest thing Christian Jones taught me is just to stay consistent and not – not dwell on the moments where you're not doing so good because uh, you're, you're not going to be perfect. Not everything is going to go how you want it to go. And just being able to focus and put that play or, or whatever is happening behind you and just focus on on where you are now and what you're doing. And um, also with Cam, Cam, he's uh, been a guy who's uh, sit behind Christian for those two years and just being able to learn and, and learn from Christian's experiences like I did as well. So, so just, just, just I feel Cam is he's gonna be he's gonna be ready and um, he's just soaking it all in right now. Second row, uh, Chris Hammer with Twenty Four Seven Sports. Um, I know y'all lost a lot off of last mm-hmm. year's team, but I'm curious, how would you, how do you think about the talent level on this team after all the additions that were made as well? Yeah, uh, like you said, we we lost some key guys on our team um, to the NFL, which congratulations to them. But like you said, I feel like our talent wise is good because when you look when you look at the playing field while we're practicing and stuff, it's like there's no drop off. Everybody's communicating well, everybody's gelling well together. So I feel like we got a lot of depth on our team right now, and uh, we're doing pretty good. Back row in the aisle. Hey, Galen, Adam Rosso, Spectrum News, Dallas. If you were writing a scouting report on yourself, uh-huh. skills, attributes, what you do well, what would it say? Uh, on myself, I'll probably say some some pros. I would say good feet, good hands, um, willingness to learn the game, and being and the consistency in his uh, technique, no matter when he's tired or or uh, when he's fresh. You had another one in the back row. Don and Conrad, 15 ABC and Bryant College Station. Uh, you guys are going to see a lot of new road venues this season. Mm-hmm. Are there any in particular you're extra excited about for the atmosphere? No, nah, I, I, I got that question asked me uh, before as well. So uh, I'm actually excited for all of them because, uh, in my opinion, my favorite game is to play all the road games because you kind of get that uh, underdog feeling when you go into that stadium and nobody's wanting you to win. So uh, I'm really excited for all of them just to get to see and experience the fans of uh, other teams. Two final questions on the end here. Uh, did you talk trash to the team when you got the highest rating on the team when NCAA? No, I didn't, but they definitely they did I definitely heard it from my teammates. <laughs> I, I got I got a little little stuff from my teammates. So anytime I mess up on the game they, they let me hear. <laughs> Final question on the aisle. Hey, Kelvin when uh in the OU game last year, when OU had that goal line stand, uh-huh. for you guys going forward, what what changed for you guys as an O line after that and the success you guys had late in the year when Iowa State and Tech and you know, the last two games. How do you? What did you guys focus on to carry that momentum forward into this year after after the OU game? 
yeah, just uh, asserting our dominance. I feel like in that moment we were we were uh, kind of lackluster in that moment, as you could say. Uh, seeing that as a low line is not fun. So I feel like from that moment on we kind of understood and, and, and took it personal, which which we take everything personal. We come in every game ready to play. We come in every game wanting to win. But just that moment of not being able to score in a one-yard line, that's kind of something that's like – like, like they hit us real deep, so it kind of gave us that extra, extra push to, to want to fix our mistake and, and actually get in the end zone in the red zone. Calvin, good job. Thank That's you it. very Thank much. You. Thank you.